Yo, 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 Pastor Jay is here. How are you? I hope you're well. Wow, this beautiful autumn weather in Washington, this area is beautiful. The fall colors start smearing into our area. And I hope you take a moment to go out, get a fresh air, and just feel the autumn, and I'm sure you feel better. Of course, I am kind of very frustrated as I listen to the news and that whole what's going on in the world and what's going on in the USA. It's really depressing me. Let me just kind of introduce you one book. Um, this book was written in 1966 and the writer name is Endo Shusaku, is a Japanese writer. And he wrote a book as he visited uh, that uh, 26 Saints Museum and Memorial at Nagasaki's and Nishisaka Hill. In 2016, this novel came out as a movie. Can you guess what that movie was? Yes, Silence. I am sure many of you watched this. The novel raised many, many questions. Why did they have to die? And if God really lives, and can he force martyrdom to those who love him? If God is all-powerful, why does God remain silent after seeing the suffering of his sons and daughters? Many questions. Let's watch together. Our Lord said to them, Go ye into the whole world and preach the gospel to every living creature. Ferreira is lost to us. He denounced God in public and surrendered the faith. That's not possible. Father Ferreira risked his life to spread our faith all over Japan. It seems to me that our mission here is more urgent than ever. We must go find Father Ferreira. This is in your hearts, then, both of you? Yes. Then I must trust God as Buddha down. The moment you set foot in that country, you step into high danger. Upon the arrival in Japan, Father Garupe was executed. Father Rodrigo had faced Japanese Christian persecution. He was in deep conflict as he watched the Japanese Christians dying. Father Rodrigo prayed and prayed. The price for your glory is their suffering. He was writing the word Laudate Eum, praise the Lord, with his fingers inscribed on the dark prison wall. I could not hear God's voice. Father Rodrigo heard the groaning of good farmers dying without enduring torture. But he did not hear the groaning of God. He shed tears, tears as he watched them being killed. Eventually, he gave up God for Japanese Christians. I was thinking, what would I do if I were Father Rodrigo? I understand. I feel his pain. I felt his frustration. I felt his suffering. I felt his tears. But here, one thing struck my head. Maybe you may not agree with me. Listen very carefully. Those Japanese Christians made a choice to be persecuted as they kept their faith. They had faith in God. They had faith, hope for heaven, hope for the everlasting life, hope for salvation. They are the one who have decided on their own. They didn't give up God. However, the priest forgot about God's promises. Priests forgot about the resurrection and eternal life. He only think about the Christian's persecution and pain and suffering and dying. And he couldn't bear watching the pain of fellow Christians being killed. 
Let me rephrase that. True belief is that the visible world is not everything. But there is an eternal life cannot be seen. It seems God doesn't answer our prayers. God seems keeping silence. We often ask God, God, where are you? Especially young people like you may go through many, many, many questions and many more struggling. There are so many questions for you and you cannot understand. There are so many unanswered prayers. That's why we are getting frustrated. So that's why I would like to invite you to this scripture verse. And today's scripture verse is very important. Then listen very carefully. This is what David was going through, as of what we are going through right now. Look at Psalm chapter 13, verse 1. How long, O Lord, will you forget about me? Will you forget about me forever? How long will you hide your, your face from me? Can you feel that, this frustration? Can you feel his devastation and pain and fear? Look at verse 2. How long must wrestle with my thoughts uh, and every day and have a sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? He has fear. He has frustration. That's right. We all go through this kind of frustration too. You know, during this week, I received one text message from a pastor whom I really respect. He's a very prominent uh, pastor in Korea. As a matter of fact, he was at the airport and he sent me a text message and asked me to pray for him. And I was wondering uh, what, what, what happened. He said he was on the way to see his son in USA. His son was dying. I was just shocked. I was speechless. What could I say to him? He's been a pastor as long as I know. He's a wonderful and great pastor. His entire life dedicated his life for the church and God. How could these things happen to him? Why? I don't have any answer. All I could do, I told him, be strong and I'll pray for you. This kind of situation we're going to go through. This is what David went through. How long? Why? God, are you forget about me? I'm sure sometimes you may go through this. God, why me? Are you forget about me? Are you going to hide from me? But David didn't stop there. If you look at uh, verse 3, look on me and answer, O oh Lord, my God, give my all light to my eyes, or I will sleep in death. What is he doing? He's praying to God. That's right. This is what we have to do. When we go through frustration, when we go through devastation, when we go through fear, when we go through the, all the hard time, this is what we have to do. We have to pray to God. We have to tell everything to God. Open your heart. Just lay out everything before, before God. You just talk to Him. Your personal issue and family matter and school problems and friend problems and job and finances. Just lay everything before God. In fact, I would like to ask you to pray for our country and nations. Right now, we are going through a very crucial, crucial period. More than 200,000 people died because of coronavirus. More than one million, one million people died in worldwide. Our country is in chaos. We need to elect 
new president. There are a lot of racial tensions. I would like to invite you to pray. Pray for our country. Pray for our president. And pray for our life. We have to pray for our family and our brothers and sisters. This country is your future. This country is for you. So don't be frustrated. Don't give up. Don't be discouraged. Pray more. I am not sure this psalmist has his prayer answered. Look at verse 6. I will sing to the Lord, for he has been good to me. Look at it. As I said, I'm not sure whether he answered his prayers, but he just decided to praise God. He decided to, to exalt God. This is the true faith. This is true belief. It doesn't matter whatever the environment, whatever the situation is. This is the faith that we have to do it. We have to keep this faith. And let us keep praying. And let us keep praising. Even though it seems God is on mute, and even though God is keeping his silence, we have to praying and we have to keep praising God and someday someday we will understand why God put us go through this the book of silence ends like this in a quiet silence God said I wasn't silent. I was just sharing the pain together. God is with you and me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us Jesus Christ Thank you for giving us hope. Thank you for giving us eternal life. Let us not lose our faith in you. You are with us all the time, but we are the one who forget your presence. Father, let us continuously praise you. Let us continuously hold your hands. Whatever just attacked us, whatever just surround us. Father, we realize that there's nothing we cannot overcome. There's nothing we cannot fight against because you are mighty powerful God. We thank you for that. Father, we thank you for keeping us wonderful family, wonderful country. Thank you for keeping us Jesus Christ. Now I'm asking your abundant blessing in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit to every one of us, as well as our family and our church, our country, all the medical steps, taking care of patients as they sacrifice their life. And please, please bless our political leaders to become true Christians and all the missionaries, ministers spreading your word throughout the world, all the American soldiers fighting for peace and freedom throughout the countries, bring them home safely. Amen.